Okay guys, welcome to the topology uh, tutorial. We're going to take you through uh, how to uh, take a model outside of ZBrush and uh, bring it into Maya, ready set up for topology. So here's a Nat Mac Fiegel that uh, I've uh, sculpted. This started out at Life in Sculptress. We've been on a little bit of uh, work inside ZBrush. So what I'm doing now is uh, just going to show you the uh, topology lines that we're going to be following. So um, I've turned on poly paint and I'm just going to choose a standard brush and then turn off Z add and just turn on RGB. I've got a very dark colour uh, to add. And this works on uh, the pixels so the higher the mesh the better the quality. But just for the, just to show you where the polygons go, I'm just going to whiz through this. So what we're looking to do is create some loop lines. So there you can see how uh, I've made a sort of a, a, a an inference to where the eye loops are, giving a sort of polygon shape, and underneath to the fulcrum, over the lips, down to the chin. And then just highlighting where the polygons could go for the lips. These are these are very big blocky polygons. This obviously would be very big and blocky. It gives you an idea of uh, sort of like the loop lines that we're sort of looking for when we start to do topology on a face. And I'm pulling down the polygons as well, where I can put the polygons in around the base of the nose, into the eye, under the eye socket, over the chin and cheek, and then into the side and down the crease lines for the smile lines on the face. So just drawing these on just sh gives me an idea of how the flow of polygons can go. I take it over towards the ear and here I'm breaking in to the actual loop so I'm breaking out of the loop so that enables me to do the side of the polygon as well and then down to the inside of the ear. Now when you start working uh, on your uh, on your own topology it's, uh, it's useful to keep in mind uh, big polygons big vast areas as, as much as you can try and keep the polygons as, as large as you can for as long as you can don't don't start micro subdividing very very quickly uh, otherwise you will uh, you will end up going blind with all the uh, the amounts of polygons that you'll be drawing onto the surface and that just brings us down to the bottom we're just going to pull in where those vertex edges are so I'm kind of poking the fit the eye facing just to make them into triangles just over the top of the back of the ear I'm not going to do much more on this. Just over the eyebrow, just to uh, to give you an idea. So there's uh, there's an idea of my topology flow lines that I want to create, and obviously I have thousands and thousands of polygons at the moment. So that would really help me reduce the number of polygons, which is what you need when you're inside uh, when you're inside a game engine. Okay, so we're just going to export this out. Uh, we're going to export this out as an OBJ. Uh, we could use the Go Z button, but uh, the OBJ format just allows us to uh, keep the process simple if you don't get the Go Z button working. So here it is inside Maya. Uh, what we've got is a um, 176,000 polys, I think it is, in total. Triangle polyers, that is, uh, which is something like 80 some thousand. Uh, point polys and as you can see those 87,000, 88,000 polygons are in there as well. So it's uh, way too big uh, it, it, there are too many polygons as we go through. So I'm just going to turn off poly paint just going to turn my um, my pick selection up there we go just clear it out just so we can focus on uh, reducing the number of polygons. So we're going to go to the Z plugin toolbar and uh, we're going to choose decimation. I'm going to reduce the decimation down to about 15%. And just look through those how many kilo uh, how many um, thousands of polygons will be left. And I'm going to press pre-process all. I must pre-process first otherwise it won't work. And then I'm going to go back up to the plugin. and I'm going to decimate 
the current model. As you can see, the model has now been decimated. Now let's have a look how many polygons it is now. And there we go. We've got uh, 13,000 polygons, 26,000 faces. And most of the detail has been kept. Okay. I'm just going to show you uh, what happens if you go too far, which is something that um, can happen. So, uh, just reduced it down, and now I'm going to pre process, and <laughs> there you go. But if we, um, if we were looking at, uh, it looks like a very early version of, uh, of character modeling, back when I first began. And uh, let's just turn it up a little bit, see if we can get anything. This is 10%. Pre-process that and decimate it. That's still too too few pieces. So we'll uh, we'll go with the one that's at 15%. Uh, we'll export that one out now. So let's just uh, re-export it as an OBJ. So uh, just going to call this uh, topology. Give it another another name. So deck for decimation. And uh, let's let's uh, import this in. Uh, in fact, let's let's do this as an open. Let's uh, let's open the scene file up. It's much easier because we don't we don't need the other scene file in. It's uh, it's not needed. Okay, so I'm gonna. You can see you automatically see that there's less polygons in there. Uh, we can see a lot more. Uh, space between each each of the uh, faces that are in. Uh, now I'm going to set up the Maya scene ready so that I can begin to um, paint polygons or place polygons on this surface. So the first thing that I need to do is uh, well I need to drop this onto a, a, a layer really. So uh, let's uh, just create a layer. So in the channel box, let's create a new layer. And if we uh, use the one with the little light and the little ball with the object selected it will automatically drop on to the uh, to the layer and then we're going to go up and uh, we're going to press the uh, the I'm just showing you now the how how we can turn this on and off okay and if we uh, if we slide this over you can see that you can turn it off visible and invisible uh, as and when Okay, so uh, we've uh, turned this on using the little magnet tool at the top. And this has made the surface live, and this means we can now stick polygons to it. So let's build a let's build a shelf, just to help us. Um, let's create a new shelf. Give it a name. Let's call it Topology. I'll re topology. There we go. Retro typing. This is not the computer that's slow. It's just me. Can't spell. Okay, and we're going to drag some of these things on. So I'm going to choose the uh, uh, shelf editor just to bring the shelf from the end, right at the very end. I'm going to bring it using the little tab tool all the way to the beginning, or near, near enough to the beginning. Let's bring it to the beginning and save that. Close it out. And let's add some tools to it. A couple of ways of doing it, uh, which is the polygon tool. We can middle mouse drag the uh, the tool that's current. That's one way of doing it and the append tool, middle mouse drag that one on or if we hold control and shift and go to a menu we can uh, click and drop the new selections on so uh, let's, uh, let's just put some of these down now so we're just going just gonna to select the uh, create polygon tool must turn on back face culling and the x-ray button uh, when you first start because you need to get your polygons facing the right direction so I'm just uh, looking for a place to start. Usually, top. I, li I seem to like to start in the the top corner where the uh, crease line is, going into the uh, eyebrow. So I'm just uh, doing this clockwise, and uh, I think I've established before that if you do it clockwise, it will be pointing the wrong way. So uh, I'm just going to go down here and add a new material. Uh, let's bring this up to the top so you can see it. Let's go and add a new material. I'm going to choose a Lambert. And open up the attribute editor for the Lambert. And let's go to the new Lambert surface and choose a funky colour. Let's give it a new name. Let me call this new topo. Give it a nice funky colour. For some reason I always go pink. 
It reminds me of when I first started modelling. Uh, there used to be two surface types, pink surfaces and blue surfaces. Just seem to be stuck in that way of doing it. So there you can see the. Uh, I need to reverse this round. I've added that to the shelf, and then press the reverse button. So you see, holding down Control and Shift was how I dropped that to the shelf. So you can see how those vertexes have been stuck to the surface vertexes as well. So we're going to use the append tool now to draw out the rest of the ring and this uh, automatically connects it to the side that you select first so select an edge, look for the little dot in the corner and then draw out from that corner. If you draw it any other way it will uh, cross over. Now if you press Y then you can reuse the tool you've just used so it's a good way of uh, click and selecting as you go around. Try to um, visualize how sort of like an eye socket looks if you're doing a human face. Uh, so the eye does actually go backwards uh, slightly. I know everybody's different, but uh, generically speaking, they do sort of slant backwards, uh, sort of giving you more of a peripheral vision on the actual thing. And we'll just draw these round. So I'm looking at uh, eyeballing up where, <laughs> eyeballing, excuse the pun, uh, looking at where the edges need to go, the flow of the edges, and the loop of edges. I can see that that's going to connect up quite nicely. So I'm just going to connect those two edges together. So I'll just click one edge to the other edge and press enter and we've completed the eye socket. A few tweaks, so let's go to uh, vertex mode and then to drag it on the surface you're dragging using the uh, center circle. And the center circle is what we use. Okay, so I'm just going to look at drawing out some of these uh, these other polygons. This is drawing a polygon right out of the middle. I think that's a little bit too big, to be honest. I think we might have to uh, we might have to undo that one and go a little bit thinner, because otherwise we're not going to be able to join into the the actual surface uh, around the nose. So let's just make it a little bit thinner. And uh, you're probably going to do this several times when you're modelling. Just put a polygon down and then end up deleting the polygon and putting another polygon down. And we're putting several down. I think last year we had a couple of students that put hundreds down and had to delete them. So I'm just drawing this out and now I've made the center point. I can uh, then select it over the top. Now we must try and remember the uh, center line because obviously we're going to be mirroring uh, this geometry. So now I'm looking for this crease line going down into where the uh, the nose is. So let's just uh, create a new little piece there so just to break out. We're breaking out of that loop. and then we can put in that little, little little piece there that's just going to act as an area where we can build up from and down again all the time just keep moving around looking left and right around the object using your tumble tool tracking tool turning the model around always looking at the different angles you know you're building a, a 3D thing, you're not building something that's 2D and you're just, just looking at it from one point of view. You must look all the way around it. Okay, so that's uh, that's given me quite quite a fair bit to go with, so I think now's probably a good time to have a look at uh, maybe I'll just build up these eyebrows, look for the eyebrow, where the eyebrow's going to go. Just fill these bits in, tie up a few loose ends. just coming over the eyebrow now, over the top of the eyebrow looking for a place to break out at some point so I think we might have to just uh, extend sideways down towards the temple and there we go and then down again and then join up those those faces. You can see how quite how big some of those faces have become. But if you remember back to the original sort of zebrush sketching I did where I drew over the topology, it's a similar sort of line as we come through. So we've got got almost the full size of the mask there for the eye eye socket. 
So, because we've got them on a layer, we can hide the actual model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the um, Move Tools options and I'm just going to turn off a, a feature that Maya has by default, which is the Retain uh, UV Weighting option. This just allows you to uh, select groups of uh, vertexes, edges, whatever, and snap them to center lines. So I'm going to snap those using the Grid Snap to the center, Grid Snap and the X arrow allowed me to center them. And then I'm going to use the Mirror tool I'm just going to mirror them. And what you've seen there is this is Maya merging the actual um, vertexes together and the tolerance for the vertexes is, is too great so it's trying to merge too many things together. So I'm just going to open up the option box for the merge options. And uh, down there you can see that we've got merge on by default so I'm just going to turn that off and hit the merge button. It does mean that I'll have to merge them manually at some point but as soon as we're just playing at the moment looking at what these look like um, we're not going to be keeping this geometry as it stands. So there we've got the uh, the eye socket built and the uh, top of the cheekbone and uh, the started with the bridge of the nose still a long way to go uh, quite a lot of history so it's always a good point to uh, delete history when you get to a certain point that you're happy with just speeds up the model you're going to be doing quite a lot of modeling so you can imagine 10,000 worth of uh, polygon clicks uh, just turning on the x-ray looking around the model does it fit the contour of the surface? Am I happy with it? Can I continue on the next part? And we, we don't need to start with the next part, we can start with modeling some new new bits of geometry if we want. Okay, then we'll uh, leave it there and move on to the next bit. <laughs>